we're interested in whether the magnetizability of a metal influences how far an object made of that metal will move when it's exposed to a transcranial magnetic stimulator magnetic field. The topic that we really want to touch on in the end would be whether it is safe for people with metal objects in their head to be exposed to transcranial magnetic stimulation. At any rate, we need to start by looking at some magnetizable objects and we've got three categories here. If we look at this highly magnetizable um, objects you'll see that they can be picked up by a weak magnet. The next two are weakly magnetizable and they're unimpressed by a weak magnet. And non-magnetizable again are unaffected. Now we have a strong magnet and that will clearly have an effect on the highly magnetizable objects. The strong magnet will finally, if you press it hard enough or close enough, you will get some sluggish activity or some movement, but not much. The non-magnetizable materials, however, do nothing. Here we have suspended the mildly or weakly magnetizable objects by one and a half meters of cotton from the ceiling and we've suspended them about half a centimeter for one and about 0.8 of a centimeter for the other in front of the coil of the TMS machine. And we're going to see if a single pulse makes them move. And at the moment we think that there is the tiniest amount of movement, but we're expecting the stimulator to increase their movement. So here we go. And we can see particularly the one that was closer moving slightly and I can't tell you that the, that the other is moving because of the pulse because I think it actually was touched by the one that was moving however let's try a train of TMS and see what happens so the impression is that both move perceptibly. Okay, well, we still have Fiona Lawson helping us with the filming. Thanks, Fiona. Now, we've now hung here the two highly magnetizable objects, and our theory, mine and Fiona's, is that they will jump much further than the ones we saw a moment ago and we'll fire off a couple of single shots. Oops. I'm not sure if you got that but they, they um, jumped about 30 centimetres, well perhaps not 30 but jumped through quite a few centimetres. I'm now going to start a train and I think they'll jump a long way again. So these are the highly magnetizable jobs. Okay, well now we have the two non-magnetizable objects. One of them 
is a titanium clip used in neurosurgery. The other is a piece of wire from my garden shed. I couldn't uh, move either of them with the strong magnet. Small zephyrs in the air are causing the slightest movement. But what we have to see is whether TMS pulses cause greater movement. And as far as I am concerned, they are not moving perceptibly to that those single pulses. Now the the real determinant will be whether they jump all over the place with a train. There you have a train and for me um, no perceptible movement. Later I think later uh, Fiona wants to stick them into a cantaloupe and see if she can make them jump out of a cantaloupe. Um, so this would suggest that if you are having metal in your head, you either have a titanium clip or a piece of wire from Here's the clip, the titanium clip, and here's the little uh, wire thing which jumped quite dramatically. So this is highly magnetizable, and we thought this was not magnetizable. I'm going to put them into the flesh of this cantaloupe. I push that in as far as I can so that we can still see it and this is the this is the titanium clip so we push them both in they're about the same length and we push them in as far as they'll go and we're now going to treat our cantaloupe with TMS and see what happens uh, to our clips. Are you ready to start, uh, Fiona? Okay, here we go. And we'll come back and talk to you later. We won't ask you to watch the 70 trains. Okay, so many things have two names and this cantaloupe has been christened Rocky by Fiona. So fortunately someone put some hearing protection on Rocky and he's now had his 3,000 trains and I think if you look here you will see just the edge of the two items we placed in there formerly. So there we are. Um, now Rocky is made of the right stuff for breakfast. I can't say it's the right stuff for this study but at least he's given us something to think about when we are considering whether metal objects in heads move when treated with TMS. We're just, we're just going to put these two pins into Eggy um, as we did with the cantaloupe. So here's the, this is the clip and we've just pushed it in there till it disappears almost. Here's the highly magnetic P 
pin that we made and we're expecting that might move. So now we're going to treat Eggy for the standard uh, 75 trains and see what happens. Now we'll start his treatment. And now halfway through the treatment. Okay, well, we're just about to finish the last of a long series of stimulations, and as far as Fiona and I can tell, the neither kit has moved a skerrick. Thank you very much.